What's going on guys? It's your boy Sir Lionheart here coming at you with another QA video for the month of February. It's our second QA video of the year and we are about to hop straight into your guys' questions that you left here on Discord. So let's get into it. And you know what? Before we do, I want to thank everybody for wishing me a happy birthday back in uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, you guys wished me a happy birthday on the community post that I left saying that I couldn't upload any videos that day because I was just out. And I, honestly, I was just taking that day off to relax and I, I really needed it. So uh, thank you guys for understanding and I appreciate all the birthday wishes. Thank you. I appreciate you guys very much, but let's hop straight into this video, shall we? So it looks like our first question is gonna be from Mill Mighty Me. And he asked, what are some games that you really like, wanted to like, but something held it back so much that it was just hard to play or a disappointment in your eyes. All right, guys, some of you already know the answer to this question, so I'm gonna let some of y'all answer it. I'm gonna give y'all five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Final Fantasy 15. Oh my God. When that game first released, I was so hyper. I was like, yo, I can't wait. I've been wanting an action RPG Final Fantasy game for so long. Oh my God, it's a mainline game. I'll do all the cool stuff you can do in these trailers, switching characters, all this stuff that they advertised that it was gonna be. I played the demo, you have these skills you can actually activate at the press of a button, promising, you know, the use of skills you can customize, you know, and then the game came out and you know, I was happy for like the first 10 hours. And then I started to slowly realize that this game was not finished. <laughs> <laughs> this game was not finished all right so i say that because there were so many quality of life changes that happened like a year after i played the game after i dropped the game when i first initially played it you couldn't switch characters which had a video all right in the trailer it was in a the trailer they advertised that you could switch characters they, they actually had you shooting as Prompto. They actually had you playing as Ignis or whatever. But literally, the game released and you couldn't do any of that. And I was like, that was kind of weird to me. That was really awkward. And I'm like, I thought, okay, I thought you could do this, but okay, I, I guess that's not it. And then there's like several things about the game I didn't like. The, the massive amount of emptiness it felt. That world felt so empty to me. 15 on release day it, it just felt empty you would just walk around these huge planes and it would just be nothing man and you would just roam around and it's like dude it just felt like there was nothing to do other to do other than hunts which you can only accept one at a time by the way you could only do one hunt at a time you couldn't accept multiple go do multiple come back no you had to go one by one you have to accept the hunt leave walk like 25 minutes into a field come back with the hunt completed and then turn that in do the other hunt and there's like plenty of hunts you could do but you could only do one at a time which was like really weird and it was really like time consuming it's just an overlooked function of the game that they should have just let you did and then there was other things i didn't like about the game the, the game's pacing man the game's pacing just felt really awkward and i didn't like the fact that in order to get like the first half of the game you had to go you had to watch the movie you had to watch the the to get the whole picture of what was happening in like the first few hours of the game you had to have seen the movie which involves you know noctis's dad and then a whole bunch of other characters that you're like who the fuck are these guys and then like that's the only way you're gonna know who they are is unless you watch that movie you figure out like it's, it's, it's messed up because shit goes down in like the first couple hours of 15 but it's off camera it's off camera and i think it would have been so much more immersive it would have been more impactful to have experienced that within the game i shouldn't have to go watch another piece of media just to enjoy a game the other thing that really killed my height was just how dry the gameplay was for final fantasy 15 it was like yeah you had magic fusion but it was just like there was no layer depth man it was like you could literally mash buttons and, and just actually beat stuff up and it's just 
I didn't like that. Like there was no, like no kind of extra layer of gameplay because I understand they kind of want to make things, keep things easy because it's a it's from, it's a leap from turn base to action base, and I know they know that most of their players are pretty much used to turn base. Probably a lot of them haven't played action based games or whatever, but understand you need to you know make that transition a lot easier but there should also be an extra layer to peel back for people more accustomed to these types of games i mentioned earlier that they had they had like skills you could actually activate on point like with the press of a button in the during the demo that we got of final fantasy 15 one of the few demos we got uh you could actually activate triangle and it would activate a skill and you could switch between the skills or whatever and i thought you would be able to do the same thing in the main game but that function was stripped and i'm like you can't even do that here's the too long didn't read summary when i first initially played final fantasy 15 it didn't feel complete there were functions that were missing that i felt like that were basic necessities for me to enjoy that game they didn't have it but I learned that they were going to update the game and release DLC that add more functions, so I decided to wait. But when I first played the game, I was disappointed. I was disappointed. I was sad because my hype for that game was high and it died down. The best thing about that game was a fishing mini game. I spent at least 25 hours fishing. But anyway, that, that, that was one of the harder games for me to play. And it was kind of a disappointment because it was like I kind of wanted those games. I wanted that game to just be like my Final Fantasy. Like it, it, it was in the works for so long that I kind of expected that game to be like just a masterpiece, but it's not a masterpiece. It's a, I think it's not a bad game. It just disappointed me. But anyway, let's move on to the next question before I go on to about another 20 minutes of ranting about that okay so let's let's move on let's move on alrighty guys so our next question is from Floro and, and Floro asks who are your top female slash male VAs well I can give you three of my favorite VAs immediately number three Erica Lindbeck she does such a good job with awkward characters like Futaba. She 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 actually sold me when she did the voice for Futaba. I really like her. And you know, I got the meter at Anime Milwaukee a, a year ago. Or was it two years ago? Actually did some footage. Actually, uh, I was able to ask her a couple of questions and stuff. I think I asked her what her favorite meme was, but she's, she's very uh, energetic. Uh, I wouldn't even say that, but she's got a lot of charisma. You know, she you can, you can just hear it in her voice. And it's one of the most more unique uh, female voices that I've actually heard uh, in any media. So like Erica Lindbeck for sure is one of my favorite voice actresses. This is like a lot of long list I could probably give you guys, but I'm just gonna give you a top three. But Erica Lindbeck does a really good job with her characters, spe specifically the the more chariz charismatic characters. Uh, and the awkward character she does all that pretty well man she, in anything she does i think she does well and then the second the second uh va Ma uh, he does ryuji max max middleman i think he does ryuji he does rusty i heard him i first heard him as Ryu or not ryuji but uh rusty from stella glow and that's when i'm like dude who is this guy's voice actor he's so good the way he just puts he puts so much expression into everything he says dude you know and it's like I, you don't hear that often with other you know voice actors and actresses and it's like this dude he i feel like he's like the best i'm not gonna say the best but he's one of the best at expressing almost every emotion you know you you hear how mad he is you hear how like upset he is at stuff how frustrated how sad you know, it, you, you hear the expression a lot. So I think he does a really good job uh, as Ryuji, R Rusty. And I think he does One Punch. He, he, I think he's a voice actor for One Punch. I I've, haven't watched One Punch Man, but I just know that he's definitely one of my favorites for how well he expresses his, uh, his, his self through these characters. 
I, I love him for a fact. But the number one VA for me, I think many people might disagree or agree with, is Jamison Price. My man's voice can move mountains, bro. Like, I heard him first as Tager from Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. And I'm like, yo, this guy has the manliest, the most manliest fucking voice of all time. I was like, yo, what am I hearing, bro? <laughs> Did y'all hear that? I just heard mountains crumble. <laughs> like, this dude is amazing. Uh, I haven't at all saw him at a convention. I, don't, I doubt he'll ever come to, you know, Anime Milwaukee, but... Like, I would love to, for him to sign my copy of Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. I, I I still have my first copy of that, and that's the the first time I heard him from. Because he also does Malik and Tales of Grace's F. He does Shojiro. Shojiro? I think that's it. Shojiro? You know, Coffee Dad from Persona 5. And he also, he is the narrator in Catherine for the coffee. So it's like, he, he does a lot of stuff. Honestly, I think this man is underrated. I think everybody I listed is underrated. Erica Lindbeck, to be specific. I'm not even sure if I said her name right. I'm not sure if I'm saying anybody's name right. I don't care. These guys are amazing. All three of them, Max, Erica, Jameson, those are like top three right there for me. I just feel everything. When they speak, I feel that. <laughs> All right? I feel that shit. When they speak, when they act with the voices, I feel it, but yeah, those are my three, uh, my top three VAs. <laughs> that was I, I kind of geeked out on some shit. I, I shouldn't be geeking out on that. People, people are gonna think I'm weird. Mac underscore Daddy SM asks, "What's your top three favorite obscure games everyone should play?" Man, oh man. First of all, for my Japanese RPG people, let me just get this out of the way right now. One of the most obscure games I think I've played is Skies of Arcadia. One of the most Japanese RPG obscure games. I don't see a lot of people talk about this. So this is why I added it to my obscure games list. And it's one of my favorite RPGs. It's one of the first uh, RPGs I played outside of the Final Fantasy series. Because when I first got put on RPGs, it was Final Fantasy 4. And then I played Final Fantasy, you know seven and then it was back to one and two but you know skies of arcadia was i want to say maybe like the third rpg outside of final fantasy i played uh that i'm like yo man this game is amazing it was it was a completely different formula different world setting different lore i was like man this is crazy i, I love that i love that pirate aspect so skies of arcade is just you going around exploring the world exploring making discoveries and you know you got a crew you, you you you're playing as vice i think his name is vice and then you got uh two characters i forget their name aika aika and fina i think her name is fina she carries this little chow this chow like character the game was made by sega the game was developed and published by sega i believe and you know the coolest thing about that game to me was the fact that during battle you can change the element of your weapon and that always stuck in my head like man that's pretty dope you can change the element of your weapon just to just to hit their weak points i'm like yo this game is sick and, and just overall that there was just so much to do there was so many collectibles and stuff and you could do in the game and the story was pretty engaging for me and i just love the handshake Ika and vice had that was that was just like it was so, it was so charming the world was charming the characters were charming but uh the one thing i think that other than you know the elemental stuff for the gameplay uh, other, other than that sticking out to me one other thing was there was a lambda burst attack. it was an attack called lambda burst that Ika had and the, the voice line goes fire consume my enemies lambda burst that's i i can't i cannot not say it when she does it it's like the it was just so enthusiastic i'm like yo i gotta say it every time because it, it was just it was just fun that game was very fun i'm glad i played it and i really hope sega decides to remaster that because that's a that's a, that that game it's a piece of work it's, it's awesome it's it's i think more people should play that game but the two other games I have in mind are Tetris Attack. Nobody even talks about that game. I have never seen a port, a remaster, uh, other than like, you know, Pokemon Puzzle League 
you know, we had Tetris Attack on the Super Nintendo. It, it was, it had Yoshi, it had various other characters, and Tetris Attack is basically the opposite of Tetris, where instead of blocks falling from the top and you arrange them as they fall to create a line, blocks are actually already in lines, but they rise from the bottom, and if they reach the top, that's when it's game over, or that's when you, you know, you lose a round or whatever, and you play it by, you can't, you, you have to, like, chain, you have to get uh, a chain of blocks of the same color at least three or more to make them disappear you gotta just keep doing that and then you can actually combo that so after you like get three in a row you can actually combo the falling blocks so like let's say if you chain three of, a, of the same color and there's blocks oh on or on top of that those blocks fall but you get a small period of time to arrange those blocks to maybe match up with two more two or more underneath it and it if it falls on top you get a chain you get a combo and it'll keep going it'll keep going until you don't get that combo and i think that was pretty cool because that that was like uh one of the first games that taught me about having reactions that game you need reactions you need to just play it you, you just need to get you know that hand eye coordination and you need that speed so it's like reactions is what you need for for a game like that and it kind of helped me uh cognitively uh kind of get cogs running and honestly i think it helped me think better it, it made me feel like smarter in a way because it kind of worked my my cognition it was like trying to like figure out okay with the fastest route to get these three colors to to match them up and you know get ready for the next falling block so i can you know match them up or whatever so like that game was like one of my favorite games of all time uh game series of all time because you know tetris attack was the first then it was pokemon puzzle league and then pokemon puzzle league for the game boy but we never seen another type of game like that I, I've never seen anything like Tetris Attack after Pokemon Puzzle League for the Game Boy and I was actually really disappointed because I, I really love that type of game and I really wish they bring it back Nintendo or whoever like even an indie developer that makes something like it I would fucking play that that's like literally one of my favorite games of all time types of games are puzzle games and that was like the perfect puzzle game man but the last thing the last game probably nobody really knows about i actually did make one video about this when i went over a friend's house to play this for the first time because at this time i didn't even know what it was i just went over there they said let's play some random stuff and we ended up playing a game called twinkle star sprites now it's like one of those 2d overview shooters it's kind of like galactica you know like those oak arcade shooters it was it's like that but it has various gameplay mechanics when you're when you're shooting you can get power-ups and stuff and it's like it's like a bullet hell kind of it's like a bullet hell game and it's one of the most anime as hell types of games you can play and it's just very it's very charming it's it's fun when you got other people to play it with because it's like a you can do 2v2 whoever gets the most points or whatever and it's like there's actually a strategy element to it and i'm like oh this is actually pretty dope man twinkle star sprites as 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 like girly as that sounds it's actually a like a real it's a real game it's a real game all right i ain't trying to say it because i ain't trying to get demonetized but it's a real game all right it's a game for everybody twinkle star sprites but yeah those are the three games uh skies of arcadia uh twinkle star sprites and tetris attack those three games are definitely i think games people should be more aware about because those those types of games are like great you know and i i hope you know i see more of that in the future because i honestly don't see any of these types of games being made other than by indies i just don't be looking at indie uh games as often they, they probably are being made they're just going under my radar because i don't pay attention to indies which i should be paying attention more to I think this year might be the year I kind of pay attention more to indies. I don't know. But anyway, let's get to the next question. So Ghostmon26 ask, for do you have any advice for new players who are starting an SMT game or a Persona game? What advice do I have for them? The the first advice I have for them is exploit the game. Cuz the game will exploit you. They will exploit your frustration and they will make you mad to where you start playing bad. So what the the one thing I will say is exploit everything you can 
about the game mechanic because the game literally teaches you to exploit weaknesses. You have to, to have a chance at winning most fights. You cannot just get away by not exploiting weaknesses. There ain't no play fair, man. Play fair. I have honor. I'm not going to attack your weakness, head ass. Good luck uh, with that 556, you know, year run of the game because you're not going to get get that lucky with RNG. You got you to gotta exploit it. There is no honor in SMT, bro. You got to exploit it. Exploit the game. Exploit that. All right? That's how you become a better gamer. You look for the cheapest way to do stuff, right? That's how that's how millionaires become. <laughs> that's how people get to become billionaires. They look for the cheapest thing to exploit. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's true. <laughs> that's how like top people are. They they do like the things that work. They do the things that work the best and are low that that take the least amount of energy from you. All right. One well, another thing for SMT games and Persona games, if you're going against a boss, just lose. Just lose. What you want to do first time going into the boss, just go up to a boss, try to find his weak point, try to throw out throw out every element, you know, just just use the first attempt as literally a throwaway attempt and just try to find the boss's weakness or whatever. You may think that, "Oh man, that's a you know, that's a whack move, man." What why would you do? Now that's like the smartest thing you can do, just throw just Throw the, the first match. Use the first match. Use the first match as a download match. All right. So when you go against a boss, just try everything you can. And if you find their weaknesses early on, try to win that fight. And as you get further into the fight, if he does some BS or if she does some BS that you weren't ready for, you'll be ready for it the second time. Just always analyze. Analyze what the opponent is doing in SMT games. For the second round and then you'll be like ready for it that's that's like that's fundamentally like stuff you just take out of almost any practice in the world you just analyze you just analyze it and then come back stronger the next time and then boom you just whoop some ass you know what i'm saying so yeah that's that's my uh advice for new smt players and persona players i i know it the game seem may seem hard because i came from final fantasy and some other you know games like Tales, Tales I can't really compare because this is an action RPG, but like a Final Fantasy turn base to like a SMT turn base, you will be, you will be turned up. All right. The difficulty will automatically be turned up on you because there's no holding back. SMT games don't hold back on you. So you shouldn't hold back on the game. None of that. Oh, I'm not going to, I'm going to play fair. No, that's not the mindset you got to have. You can't have that mindset. You got to be cheap. But anyway, that's my advice for people getting into SMT and Persona games for the first time. Be cheap and analyze bosses on the first go around. Most likely you might lose the first time, but just use that first time as an experience to learn what they're weak against and, you know, analyze their pattern and then just come back another time stronger. That's it. That's, that's, that's all I gotta say. There's more I wanna say, but I gotta get through this video. So Grand Gravy, Grand Gravy 97 asks top three favorite and least favorite Tales of characters. That's that's kind of man, top three is not fair, bro. But I'll answer it anyway. But top three characters for me, you know, this this has changed recently. You know, I, I actually often have these top top three top five talks with my girlfriend because she's into uh tells games as well and i'm like i'm always i'm always going to judith by default and she is always going to remain a top three to me so i'm gonna put judith there as one of my top three because her gameplay her design is just so she's so sexy smooth and you know she's confident and she's just like she knows what she you know what she wants she knows what she wants right and she can like her gameplay her gameplay is so good her gameplay is so fun so enjoyable so ridiculously reckless that you could just do ridiculous stuff if y'all have seen my tov playthrough you understand why i love judas so much her her ability to keep an enemy in the sky forever for as long as she has uh the ability to throw out a move and just her layers of gameplay like that, that, that character is one of the most unique characters in the tale series because of her play style 
And I love characters that have the most unique characters, like Maggie Lou. Maggie Lou uh, from Tales of Berserk is one of the most unique characters in the series for her mechanics. And I like her gameplay for that. L listen, I can talk about Judith all day. I don't, I don't want to do that right now, but Judith, she's in my top three. Second character that I like a lot is Aizen from Tales of Zestere or Tales of Berseria. Not Aizen from Tales of Zestere. That's a that's a different story. But Tales of Berseria Aizen. That that's a beast right there. But my number one character, I hate to say this because it's like I, I like Lloyd a lot too, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to give that to Sheena. I, I didn't want to have two of the same I didn't want to have two characters from the same game, but Equally, I like Sheena and Lloyd a lot. Sheena felt like more of a main character than Colette after a certain point in the story due to the fact that Sheena was one of the only characters that could, you know, summon. And that was like a really key part to the game's finale and, the, and just overall the second arc of the game. And it was like, you needed her. Without her, dude, you, what was you, you going to do? Save the world? How? How? You needed somebody that could summon. <laughs> like, she put in a lot of work in that second arc. She starts off trying to kill you. And this, she gets all this development. And, you know, she joins the team. And she gets... She just does a lot of work. And I, and I like her design. Uh, I like her voice actress. Uh, oh, man, I almost said Jenna Mar <laughs> Marbles. I don't, I don't know why I almost... I don't know why I almost called her Jenna Marbles. But Jennifer... What is her name? No. Hell? Jennifer Hell. Okay. Jennifer Hell. She's all I the only reason I knew her at the time, I'm like, wait a second. Is is that a totally spies character voice actress? And I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. But yeah, um, that was like the first game I actually started paying attention to voice actors and, and actresses. I'm like, why does Lloyd sound like Robin? You know, and it, it turns out Robin and Lloyd have the same voice actors. I'm like, that's cool. That's when I started becoming aware, like, voice actors are a thing. You know, voice actresses are a thing. But, yeah, I like Shina Fujibashi. She can do infinites just like Kratos and Zelos. And she has debuffs. And she has she's the only one in the vanilla version of the game that can do uh, any mystic art type of move while she's in Overlimit. She was the only one that could summon during battle uh you, everybody else had to wait until the ps2 version to do something in the, um an over limit but i like sheena she was a cool character she got shit done and she's definitely top top one for me for now you know it's unfair because it was top three man i had to I, I had to pick and choose are they all girls no eisen was a good uh was second but anyway worse top three worst characters some of y'all gonna probably hate me for this but I, I actually I I didn't like Dezel. Dezel, just the overall sense of there was no impact. There was no impact by Dezel. I didn't care for Dezel at all. I didn't care for that character. I never really used him, and I just felt like Zaviv was better anyway. So I never really played Dezel. Dezel but Zaviv was was a cooler Dezel. <laughs> he was just a cooler Dezel in my in my in in my opinion. So that's like worst character to me. I gotta think really hard about these next two because I like a lot of the Tales characters and it's kinda hard to, to pick who is the worst, but I can pick a lot of people from Zesteria, but I don't want to keep picking characters from Zesteria, okay? That's just not fair. Second I guess character I can say is Annis from Tales of the Abyss. Tales of the Abyss had Annis, who was basically a gold digging, no loyalty having, kinda having loyalty, iffy, can't really rely on this girl. I have to play that game again because I don't really remember all the specifics. I just remember Annis just being annoying. Annis with the doll, she she has the doll Tokunawa. She and that doll she can control. She's like a puppet master, I guess. And I didn't like her gameplay. I, I thought she was like kind of like low tier to me i just really didn't enjoy playing as her as i did the rest of the cast you know what i'm saying someone like jay was cooler if if, the, if i had a top five i would have put jade in top five by the way but Annis is, is my number two on the list i'm gonna say alicia but 
She's the worst character because she was dry. She was a dry character. Oh, wait, wait. Nope. Run that back. I didn't mean Alicia. I didn't mean Alicia. I meant Eleanor. The driest of characters in a Tales game. From Tales of Zestera, there was a character named Eleanor. The goody two-shoe fucking character of the game who just was so boring of a character she has some cool costumes some people like her i didn't like her i didn't like her for the fact that she was just a a, a, a one-dimensional ass one-track mind justice 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 ass character and i didn't like that eleanor i do not like she was whack that's all i'm gonna say eleanor was whack bro <laughs> like she didn't have anything unique going for her that made me go like yeah i like this character no Every other cast member, Rokuro, Lafayette, Maggie Lou, Aizen, Velvet, everybody was better than her. All right. And she, I guess she was like the only one not really affected by the main plot either. And I felt like she didn't deserve to be in the main party. She was just there to be like the, we got one good person. <laughs> like, you know, we got one, one positive person, one goody two shoe. But yeah, I didn't like Eleanor. All right at all she was she's number one on my list as to who i don't like at all all right Alrighty, guys so we got a question from alki hamura he asked are you an edelgar sympathizer if so why i am not a sympathizer but i do like the character she gets stuff done she's about that life in fact she was actually ready to kill us if we didn't join her which is actually od to me I, I think that's the biggest red flag I got from Edelgard the, during the entire playthrough. And then, like, her plot twist was actually kind of, like, easy. Just from the stuff she was saying, just from the stuff she was kind of saying, I'm like, oh, come on. Don't make it this easy. Don't make it this easy to guess this plot twist. But pretty much, Edelgard was about that life. And, you know, she 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 definitely had the uh, will to, to, to actually get stuff done. But I don't really want to sit here and judge the whole uh, a whole character without knowing the full story. Because we I only played one route. I, I'm pretty sure I need to play the golden deer and the blue. The blue. What are the blue boar? The blue boars? The blue lions? I think it's the blue lions, right? Yeah, it's the blue lions, I think, and uh, we gotta do them. We gotta do the other two routes. <laughs> we gotta do the other two routes before I can even sit here and be like, "Was Edelgard wrong? Was Edelgard right?" Find out next time on the next episode of Dragon Ball Head Ass. But it's like I need to play those other two routes for sure, and I'm not gonna be sitting here saying Edelgard was right. Edelgard did nothing wrong. I don't think she's like hateable, hateable, or like waifu material for me but i like her but uh i'll leave it at that for now ask me again in about four months after i play blue uh you know golden deer in uh, the blue lions i think <laughs> all right so we got another question here atm ask what's your favorite and least favorite plot in an anime i tell you what my least favorite plot in anime is having to go save some dumbass character and bring them back I hate plots like that, aka go save this girl who can't somehow defend herself even though she has this immense power, she was captured by some dude that gets beat up by some 18 year old or some 15 year old, don't do that to me, alright, don't do these rescue, I, I, don't, I don't really like rescue arcs, I think the only rescue arc I really liked was in Bleach for um, for uh, yeah it was Rukia, we, that was pretty cool to me. But I think it was like at that point I was kind of still like the, the cool thing about that was like it showcased many other characters. You know, it wasn't just this one character going in to save one character. It was just like a bunch of characters that had like kind of, uh, uh, you know, influence on the things that were happening. So I, that was pretty cool to me. But the best arc, the best plot of any anime, I would have to say. If, if, we're th if we're just talking about arcs, I love the tournament arcs. Tournament arcs in any anime get me going. All right, it gets my motors going. All right, it gets it, it gets going. All right, 
when I see some dark tournament action. Dark tournament, Yu Yu Hus uh Yu Yu Hockey Show had like the best goddamn tournament arc in any anime that I've seen so far. And honestly, I really like animes that, you know, showcase you know the strength and weaknesses of characters and like these 1v1 bouts aren't just about the main character it's like other characters get to showcase their personalities and you know their strengths their weaknesses it's, it's more about the overall cast of characters than just one character you know i because i feel like tournament arcs do the best at bringing out the potential of a full character and i and i love seeing it and, and a lot of the times in tournament arcs you see a lot of development for characters so it's like I love tournament arcs just because of that. And honestly, I, 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 I will not change my mind. I love, I just love tournament arcs. They're just like the best. It's like, that's how I feel at least. So we got about two more questions here and uh, two more questions at least that I want to answer. And uh, one of them is from Lockin26. He asks, do you ever get nervous about your gaming career and wonder if you should make changes such as selling out or <laughs> broadening the games you stream? Selling out is kind of what I need to do, to be honest. At, at this point, I've been, I was the king of sellouts, but I never sold out yet. I'm still trying to sell out. I'm trying to sell out. It's hard to sell out when nobody wants you to sell out. Nobody's giving you the opportunity to sell out. It's hard to do that. But... I say, yeah, I do get nervous, but not as much as I was nervous about having an actual job, like losing. I lost all my jobs because, you know, outsourcing like people like to say, you know, YouTube is in state or unstable. Uh, it's an unstable source. You never know what could happen, you know, and that's true. That's true. But it's the same case with regular jobs. Like the first job I ever had, I was making good money and then I got brought down the minimum wage because they outsourced the fucking jobs. And then the second job I ever had, I got laid off because, you know, too many people were, I, I guess they just needed to lay people off or whatever. And then the third job I had, working at Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, making good money, got laid off because they fucking outsourced. It's like within a year, all those jobs I had, well, the first job I had, I had for like two and a half years, but most of the jobs were like getting outsourced, 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 outsourced. In, in, in a way, it's like YouTube has been more stable than a regular job to me. And it's been more lucrative than a regular job to me over the years. I mean, not lately, of course, but it is, it's definitely the, the aspects that make me nervous are when changes do happen on YouTube. I, I, I do get nervous about, you know, the whole how long will I be able to do this for? And, you know, I've been doing it for about fucking eight years now. I've been doing this for eight years. That's crazy. I've been getting paid to play games for eight years now. That's more than that's that's six more years than the mo like the longest job I ever held. That's that's crazy to me than a regular job, I guess. And, you know, that's that says something. And it's like I felt like in a way I'm, I'm meant to do something. I think I, I'm meant to do something in the gaming scene maybe in the future i might get into the gaming industry which is like the ultimate goal really like this might lead to me becoming maybe a game designer you know maybe not a coder but maybe i can help plan out just designs for stuff or something that'd be pretty cool or maybe a consultant i <laughs> i don't know but i'm not really worried i feel the most comfortable when it's just me doing what I do and just going with the flow. I don't really ever try to plan stuff out. I kind of just fell into this. I, I kind of fell into this. All my jobs I ever had, I just fell into. I was just in the right place at the right time. At the right place at the right time. Right place at the right time. I, you know, and I'm not saying, I'm not trying to say like, I'm just gonna have to rely on that luck. But no, I, it's like, I do go out of my way to look at other opportunities towards me like I went out of my way to get a job over at uh Prospect Towers which is pretty nice I like I like it and actually it's like the perfect setup because I get to get I get paid I get paid to pretty much just do small things and I get to sit down for like the rest of the time which allows me to edit my footage while I'm at work so I get to work while I work and get paid while I get paid you know the exhibit memes back in the 
late 2000s or the mid 2000s but uh i definitely do need to broaden the games i stream and play but i think i've i think i've been doing a good job because it's not like i play like a whole i only play japanese rpgs but i play like fighting games i play visual novels it's been a while since i played a visual novel you know i play puzzle games i play mmos you know i play a wide variety of things so it's like it's not like me playing like banjo kazooie at for a speed run and i get 400 viewers but if i play something else i only get 80. you know what i'm saying i'm not i'm not that person you know i luckily i started as a variety dude so i can just just go to a different genre of a game easily you know because i i played shooting games i i play overwatch i play i play resident evil i play call of duty dude like i i honestly i, I play almost everything I, I want to say except for sports <laughs> that's the only thing i don't fuck with dude sports games unless it's an arcade sports game like blitz or nba jam i'll fuck with that but we kind of derailed there but um i guess i'm not really super nervous i like i i do get nervous whenever there's a change made on twitch or like youtube that maybe restricts me from doing or saying as much that pisses me off more than actually being able to play a certain game or whatever but that's the that's the only thing that i think that really worries me is that you know youtube the copa the copa thing that that thing worried the hell out of me but it seems like it's it doesn't really affect me because all i do is play games and you know games are for everybody you know it's not i don't play games for a specific audience I don't play games specifically for kids or anything like that. So it's like that didn't make me nervous. But, you know, once it went through and it started hitting people, it's like it didn't affect me. So I don't really care about it. But yeah, um, one thing I really do need to do, though, is kind of sell out. I, kinda, I need to sell out because it'll help pay the bills, you know, selling out would help, you know. But there are changes if I if I want to if I want to get more out of this i do need to broaden what i do not just gameplays but i need more of this face-to-face -face shit i need more personal stuff and i just need to just do more different series on youtube other than just gaming because i think you guys probably do like the personal stuff a lot more and this stuff i've been talking with friends and family about is just you know i want to do more than just games for you guys i already got an established fan base i got 50,000 of y'all subscribed on this goddamn channel so it's like i got the people there who might care about more personal videos so i'll, I'll for sure try my hardest to get more videos like these out but you know i just i just need to i just need to i just need that extra push I was so scared like two years ago to just do more stuff like this but I'll be good I'll be good I know moving forward I'll be able to get where I need to be it's not necessarily I'm scared it's just it's like I've been waiting but I'm tired of waiting I'm tired of waiting for the good time the best time to do something it's just I got to do it now that's the one thing I realize I got to do. I can't just sit there and be nervous and wait for changes to happen. I got to make the changes for myself. I gotten a lot out of this, doing this, just connecting with you guys on this community and just doing YouTube. But I feel like I can get a lot more out of it. And I want to be able to reach that potential so I can, in the future, 10 years from now, like look back on like how many, how many years I did YouTube and Twitch and did content creation. I don't want to have any regrets. So... I want to be able to move forward and get the most out of this and i can't wait for that to happen and going forward in this year i, I want to make the decision to just do it just do it just don't wait for it do it and that's what i gotta that's what i gotta do so thank you lock in for asking that question i sat here for about almost 16 minutes <laughs> So I, I think we gotta move on to the next question, the last question. And this one is also from Ghostmon. And he asks, how does it feel to have a fan base that not only supports you, but will have your back too on both YouTube, Twitch, and in general? Well, I'll tell you what, it, it's like one of the most, 
one of the most affectionate feelings you could have. Affectionate? That's not the word I want to say. But it's still, it's, a, it's, it's very warm to know that people will, you know, be there to support, be be there to back you up, you know, the you know, to lift you up when you feel down. It's like the most warm feeling ever, and to have so many people there is it's pretty great. You guys are fucking amazing. Like you guys literally changed my life. If it wasn't for you guys watching, just watching. All right, I'm not talking about donating, support me on you know, Twitch or Patreon or nothing like that. Just watching my content and leaving comments down below reacting to my content that I created and just communicating with you guys. You guys literally changed my life. I was like a shut-in, dude. Like, I didn't leave my house. I just go to work, come home, play games, talk to nobody, do it all over again the next day. Of course, maybe eat in between, but, you know, yeah, you don't need to know the details, but go to work, think about playing games, come home, play games until I pass out, go to work, think about playing games, come home play games and think about going to work and how i should quit my job but i got i need money to buy games so i go to work think about playing games <laughs> and now it's like like right be, like that's what i literally was doing i didn't hang out with anybody i didn't have really anybody to hang out with i mean i had like few occasions a few occasions maybe like once in a blue moon like once every couple of months i'll hang out with a friend and just maybe go see a movie. But for the most part, I was just literally in my goddamn room, just playing games, leave the house, do my work, come home. I, I didn't I didn't do much else, man. But literally by doing this, I, I'm able to just go out comfortably and just do things so I can talk about it with you guys. That's how I felt like a year, year and a half ago when I met my girlfriend too, where it's like, I just wanted to go out and do stuff so I can talk about it with her or go out and do stuff so I can talk about it with you guys. So you guys literally gave me a nice little push that I needed to kind of get over my social anxiety because I had it really bad in high school. My social anxiety in uh, high school was fucking awful, man. Like I literally it, it hurt to be at school. That's how bad my anxiety was. And I never understood it. I never understood why I felt the way I did until I learned about how anxiety could affect you physically. And I'm like, it's crazy. I literally had like a fear of just going out and just doing stuff. But I slowly overcame that because of video games, video games and community. So I, I appreciate you guys very much for literally being here and, and just being people <laughs> and connecting with me that's that's like the most the most amazing thing that could happen via just doing what i do like i've literally become a better person vi through video games because of you guys if it wasn't for y'all i i literally would probably hate life i would definitely still be playing video games but i i most likely would probably still have like social anxiety issues but I, I'm slowly overcoming a lot of my anxiety. And I think this year is when I will definitely reach a point to where I can do the things that I want to do. And anxiety will be knocked out. I just need to keep doing what I need to do. When going to these visits, to the, uh, the therapy visits, keep doing these things. And I think ultimately I will get to a point to where I can just do what I can do I do the best that I can do without having to worry about anxiety because that's always holding me back and I and I want to battle that and I want to get rid of that I want to I want to conquer my anxiety really but thank you guys uh we got we got we got a little bit too real uh, knock knock who's there we, we need we need some jokes in here real real quick because we got a little bit too deep but uh, it got a little bit too real. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I, I want to appreciate y'all coming out for the second QA video of the year. February is a wrap. We're done with the questions. There was like, a lot of questions I didn't answer. And I know some of you might be like, oh, he didn't answer my question. Oh, I'm, well, I'm sorry. You know, next time, better luck next time. 
get to asking me some questions y'all know where to go click that link below in the description box to get to discord to get to our discord ask some questions in the gaming discussions it'll see you'll you'll see ax line anything you hit there you know you get in there you leave me a question and i'll do it on the next uh ask me anything uh the next qa video which will be next month on i don't know when the when the thursday is but it'll be at the last thursday of each month so next month the last thursday i record it and then the last day of the month i'll upload the video so get ready for that guys but anyway that is it thanks for watching i'm going to get some water because my throat is pretty dry and i will see you guys for whatever i'm doing next which will most likely be cold steel i think this is going to be a cold steel video whenever this uploads this is going to probably be up saturday yeah, I think so, but I want you guys to get ready for some cool stuff because we I got a lot of cool stuff and then I'm just I'm just sitting on it. I'm just sitting on my P3P playthrough and I and I and I wanted to upload it since December, but it's like I, I just been sitting on it and waiting for the right time. But I definitely will be uploading that like the first week of March, which is next week. So get ready for that guys, alongside more trails of cold steel. And I will see you guys later. Thanks for coming out. Coming out. Like, this isn't a stream. Thanks for watching this video. Peace.